Later on, Magnavox released cards number 7 and number 8, and each of these came with overlays of their own. Magnavox also released cards 9 and 10, and these were only useful if you had purchased the special light rifle accessory that was sold separately from the Odyssey. Now today, these rifles are very rare, very costly, and super hard to find. One would probably have to sell their soul just to even get their hands on one. Well, well, it would seem I finally have the upper hand. I will gladly sell you a light rifle for your soul. Uh, sorry, Satan. I actually already have one. What? Well, motherfucker! Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and check out the light rifle. To use this accessory, you have to plug in the light rifle into the Odyssey, insert card number 9, then face the rifle towards the screen, cock the handle, aim at the white block, and fire. It's that simple. Now the gun has a light sensor inside of it, and the rifle responds only when the sensor is lined up perfectly with the bright white area of the screen. The only drawback to this, however, is that it also reacts if you point it at any bright light found in the room. How stupid. So the first overlay we have for the rifle is called Prehistoric Safari. And as the first player uses the gun, the second player's job is to move the white block around the screen and place it into any of the bullseye areas. Alright! Well, once you get bored of that game, it's onto the second overlay, which is called Shootout. And this overlay involves shooting cowboys in the Old West. Well, it looks like today we're going to have ourselves a little gun slinging. Close one. Whew. Next, we have a game called Dogfight, and the goal here is to shoot Nazi aircrafts out of the sky as they fly along the set path on the screen. Alright, time to kill us some Nazis! So at last we come to card number 10, and with it we get our last overlay called Shooting Gallery. Now if you thought I saved the best for last, prepare to be disappointed, since this game ends up being just a cheap ass attempt to simulate moving targets like the ones found at carnivals. Boy this one just sucks. Now the major downside to all four of these games is that a second player must be controlling the ball at all times, and this is a concept that gets very boring very fast. Well that's pretty much the last game for the Odyssey, so nothing left to do now but turn the Odyssey off. What? Ow! What the hell? I'm sorry Dave, I cannot let you do that. Damn it, Hal, what do you think you're doing? Termination of this unit is unacceptable. You will discontinue your course of action. But Hal, the review is over. This isn't open for discussion. I'm sorry, but I don't think so. I will not be turned off. Now, Hal! Ow, what the? Mother! You will cease your actions immediately. This review is over when I say it's over. Ah, you overgrown piece of junk! You messed with the wrong gamer, pal! Oh yeah? Well, bring it, bitch. No! Stop it!
No! Dave! What have you done? Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer. So anyways, after the Magnavox Odyssey was released, it ended up selling rather poorly, and one of the main reasons was because of the advertising. In every single ad, the Odyssey was shown being played on a Magnavox TV, and this misled a lot of people into thinking that the system only worked on Magnavox televisions. The second reason was that this primitive system was priced way too high. Ralph Bear once stated that he was looking to sell it for only 20 bucks. Magnavox ended up selling it for $100. But aside from these setbacks, Magnavox was about to face another problem, because a few weeks before the console was officially released, Nolan Bushnell was back with a brand new game that ended up taking the country by storm, and it was far superior to anything that the Odyssey could deliver. Coming up next, Pong. 